morning family is Tasha you already know what time it is get your little drink and pull up I got my water I've already drank my coffee for the day so I got my little water for going for the rest of the day so welcome to the channel welcome back to the channel if you are new welcome 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 if you are returning thank you so much for supporting me on my journey and today we're going to get into a topic that I talk a lot about right I talk a lot about grid down how to prepare for grid down and all that stuff right but I want to be a little bit more specific today and just walk you through um, getting ahead of blackouts. Blackouts are to come. I've talked about this a few times. I know I get a lot of questions like, you know, what's going to happen? What do you mean this blackouts? Is it, you know, is there a timeline? All that good stuff. And I would say, look, listen, there's a lot of things that are happening in the world around us that should concern you. Okay. One being food. Um, and supplies in general and how to get things and then the, the the other thing should be blackouts okay and where we are sitting as far as a world and different things that are happening in other countries and how that affects us okay and how it could affect us and then if you take that totally out of the picture and you just concentrate just on us we have our own issues and concerns here that you should be that should you, that should give you pause that okay wow I really should be prepared for a grid down blackout situation okay so today i'm about to take you through some t different areas i'm gonna say one two three four five six seven eight nine nine areas um that you need to concentrate on if you are watching this and you're trying to get ahead and prepare for future blackouts okay so let's get into it um, first thing i'm saying is continue to get food right we've we've pounded that almost every single video that we've done lately Continue to get food. Concentrate on your canned goods. Concentrate on your ready-to-eat foods. Um, and do some things like get an extra can opener. If you have one or two hand can openers, that's great. But I would say just get another one and just put it away somewhere, okay? Um, depending on what kind you get, I mean, if that thing, if you've only got one in your house and it breaks, you're, you're going to be hurt. I don't know if you've ever tried to open a can without a can opener. It's hard, okay? Um, so get your backup can openers and get ready to eat foods next I have continue to get water water is super important right within 24 hours of no water your body does start to shut down and by day three you know you're you're dying you're literally dying if you're not dead already okay water is super important so you just need to be thinking about water listen we're, we're talking about panic buying right now and food shortages and listen if panic buying happens and all that happens guess what goes as well water 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 okay so get your water. Think about containers in two ways. Um, be buying containers that you can store water in now in your home, put a treatment in and keep it and stack it, right? But also be thinking about containers that you could use to hold water, right? Let's say something happens and you need to go out and you're trying to procure water, get water. Somebody pulls up and they're giving out water, but it's a water bowl and you need to have some sort of bucket or something that you can carry and get the water from them in, okay? Um, so think about that in containers. Think about filters, filtering systems. Think about purification. Think about purification tabs, making water clean, disinfecting water, um, water treatment, all of that stuff that has to do with water, okay? Um, and be thinking about potable water and non-potable water, right? So water that you can drink and water that you cannot. You need to be thinking about the other things in your home that need potable water like you, right? And then you need to be thinking about the things that you can use dirtier water, reused water, like your toilet system, things like that. How are you watering your plants? How are you doing different things, okay, um, in your home, right? Do you have water set aside for hygiene? That type of thing, okay? Next thing I have is cooking and serving. So think about how you're going to cook, if at all. What's your cooking source? What's the fuels you need for that, right? Do you have a little butane stove and some butane fuel? Um, do you have a barbecue and some charcoal? Do you have... Um, you know, how basically how are you cooking in those utensils, having the correct pots to cook in, having the correct, you know, all the paper products to serve food, utensils, that type of thing to make life easy. Because if it's if it's blackout, you know, you're not doing dishes. OK, so think about cooking and then serving food in general. Next, I have is warmth. Think about warmth. How do you keep your house warm? If you've got a wood stove, you know, you should be stacking wood like crazy right now. OK. Um, that's also could be another way that you're cooking as well if you have a wood stove. I think if you have a wood stove, you're, you're golden in a lot of ways. Um, but wood stove, got to have wood. You should be stacking that like crazy right now. Um, buddy heaters, if you can get buddy your hands on some buddy heaters, that's propane. You need to have a little bit of ventilation, but those are inside heaters. 
Um, there's kerosene heaters. So you need to be thinking about getting your heaters and how you're gonna heat your home. Um, that could be more warm clothes, that could be sleeping bags, that could be wool blankets, that could just be more cold weather gear. You need to be thinking how you're going to possibly keep your family warm in a situation where you don't have power. No matter how long these blackouts could last, right? If we find ourselves in some sort of rolling blackout cycle, um, you know, you need to be prepared for those days that there's no power, okay? Even if it's uh, increments, okay? Next thing I have is power sources. So if you are able to get generators, um, that's the best thing, right? Get your generators. Um, I'm a fan of solar generators just because they're much quieter and I can have those without my neighbors seeing and knowing that I'm producing power. Um, so generators, another thing is um, your portable battery banks, right? All the cool ones that you can buy on the market, there's a ton of them that you can plug in, you can charge, and then you can use that for emergency power to charge a phone, to charge a tablet, whatever. The more of those, the better. They're really good, especially if you get the kind that you can charge by um, solar. Obviously, if you have to um, charge it by power, you know, something like that will charge fast in your portable, uh, in your solar generators. But all of those that you can get that individually can can recharge themselves out in the sun um, and they're a solar battery bank, that's golden. Because then you can give the kids two or three of those that they can rotate and then they're literally, you know, going out charging their their solar battery banks and then they can keep some of their entertainment things going right they can keep their tablets going their phones going that might have some off offline games might have some books that type of thing okay so those are golden we have a ton of those and those don't cost that much you guys you're talking about anywhere from 15 dollars and up there's several of them that are about 20 30 dollars that are solar and will charge themselves okay and those are fun and easy to give the kids multiple ones and just tell them hey you guys have to be responsible for recharging your own stuff okay and you don't need an actual power source to do that if you get the solar the individual solar ones okay um, that's what we use in the field a lot to charge our phones and things like that. We have rollout solar panels um, or rollout. It almost looks like a phone, but rolls out three ways and it's a solar bank, right? And it charges itself. If you get two or three of those um, for the kiddos, then you're good to go. All right. And then the other thing is making sure you're stacking up on batteries in this area, right? We're talking about power and powering things. Batteries are going to be super important. So be making sure that you're stacking up on your batteries. Uh, for different things that they might run like flashlights lanterns that type of thing speaking of lighting um at night you know during the day you can open up some stuff if it's safe to do so you can open up windows and light your home but let's say it's not safe you have to close stuff you need to be able to see so think about lanterns think about short-term and long-term lanterns right so your solar lanterns that you could charge during the day use at night your battery lanterns and your actual fuel lanterns right um, kerosene and other camp fuel that you can use for lanterns, lantern fuel. Um, so be thinking about that. Get a couple different options. I think um, you're also going to be thinking in this area, you know, your candles, your extra candles, your extra um, um, flashlights, things like that, okay? Um, having that ability to be able to see stuff at night. Obviously, you're going to be kind of concentrated in one area of the house probably if the lights are out. Um, but lighting and figuring that out now is, is important. Um, there's a lot of options out there too for the kiddo rooms, maybe some LED lights that go off of a battery system. You just kind of have to see what is out there, get it and test it, see how long it lasts, that type of thing, okay? Something as simple as if you have a solar generator, you can string up Christmas lights all throughout the house, string them all together and connect them to that one thing and then it will light up all the areas that you guys are in. Just be careful about security and people seeing that light and thinking, oh, they have the way to power, okay? That's very important that you're covering your windows and not letting people see that you have power. Speaking of security, so security is next. You know, how do you fortify your home when you don't have your ring camera anymore and your whole camera system now is down? You have no way to look out and see what's going on now around your home. Um, and, and the enemy or, and, and criminals, they know that too. Hey, this person, yeah, I see cameras, but it's grid down. It's There's a blackout. That stuff's not working. And so they get a little bit more bold. So having stuff like solar lights outside your home so that your home is still lit up in some sort of fashion to keep them and to tear them away, ensuring that you have you know sticks in the windows and you have fortifying the doors, all the ways that are off grid or off line of power, right? You don't need power to do these things. Um, you know, 
locking everything, right? Don't don't play around. Everything needs to be locked up, okay? You need to be uh, having discipline when it comes to um, no power because it gets a little bit more dangerous. There's some stuff you can invest in. Yes, if you have a solar generator, maybe you can plug in some sort of um, C CCTV type sy system where you can still see cameras outside hooked up to a TV. But again, that's taking power and um, or, or game cams. You can set up game cams that are on battery and then you can take a look. But they're not anything that's set up to a, a TV to where you can see and view at the time, okay? So just some things to think about. In this area too, you know, security, be having your NOAA radio, be able to get information still. You know, if you have ways to keep, you know, anything powered and there's some sort of information coming in, cool. But blackout to me means no internet, no power. Um, you're not going to have, like, even if you have the ability to charge your cell phone, you're not going to have information coming in, you know, online, okay, through the online source. Okay, um, next thing I have is hygiene. So be thinking about um, hygiene. How do you stay clean? I, again, I go back to my field days of how we stayed clean if you didn't have showers, you know. You need to have um, and invested in a ton of baby wipes, okay, baby powder, the different things to make you feel good, um, getting getting clean, right, without possible water, okay. Yes, you can go ahead and prep something as far as a portable shower so that if you do have water, water's not an issue, you're able to get clean that way. You need to be thinking about toilet um, and non-potable water. How are you, um, if the toilet grid is still up and you're able to flush the toilet, where are you getting that water to be able to flush the toilet? Um, if you get to the point where you can't use the toilet system, do you have your emergency toilets? Do you have your buckets? Do you have the stuff that goes inside of them, the bags? the material that goes inside. Do you have all of that stuff, okay? And the tools that you might need to, to dispose of human waste, okay? Um, I also talked about, um, oh, and then like laundry, you know, depending on how long of a blackout it is, is it a rolling blackout where, hey, it's only gonna be one day or two days a week, so hey, you could just hold that laundry until it comes online and then you do laundry? Or is this a long-term thing where now you're trying to figure out what's important, how do you do laundry, do you have water to even do laundry, what that looks like, hanging up close to dry, that type of thing, okay? And then the last thing I have is entertainment. So I, I just put a bunch of different, ideas of things that you can get to um get in your home to entertain you know a lot of families this is like very easy peasy stuff they're like oh yeah we have all that stuff we'll be fine but you guys there's a lot of families that don't do these things and so you know a blackout happens and they literally lose their minds because they do not have anything in their home to entertain them because they're all used to spreading out and everybody has their own little tablet or their own room with their tv where they're doing their own thing right and then something like this happens and they don't have the basic entertainment stuff to fall back on. So some ideas are different board games, cards, dominoes. Um, you've got, um, what else did I put? Dominoes. Oh, magazines. So keeping old magazines, magazines, different things to read, books, manuals, um, even like some arts and crafts, fun stuff, right? Even like coloring books for kids, um, other art stuff, glue, having the glue and all the crafty stuff so that they can do different things. Um, maybe sewing, crocheting, quilting for anybody that's into that, having the things to do that to keep your hands idle. Um, and movies. So again, if you have stuff that's downloaded on a tablet or or a, a external drive or something where you're able to plug that in and watch a movie and you're able to power it with some sort of solar um, power during the day, that's ideal. I mean, again, I go back to being on the ship and you know, you're out to sea. Um, it's not like you have power. You would literally need to figure out how to power your tablet, your laptop, whatever it was during the day in this case obviously we were we're on the ship there's power so we would power it wherever we had a power source let's say in our workspace or something and then we'd have a full battery so that at nighttime in our racks you could open it up and watch a movie okay a, watch a movie or two and get your entertainment in in this case maybe you don't have power to where you're able to plug it in maybe you do um and charge it so that at night you could watch a movie together or something like that watch a show that's already been downloaded um or you know, you could have some sort of solar battery banks, individual ones that you charge during the day and you use those to charge your tablet or whatever the source is that you're watching uh, movies. Just keep in mind that, remember, there's no internet. So you, this has to be stuff that's already downloaded. 
but having access that maybe you have an app where you've already downloaded every time you download a movie, it gets downloaded to your device. And so therefore you have those movies still, okay? I know a ton of preppers too that have old school stuff, VHS, movies, they have DVDs, tons of DVDs and a DVD player. And again, they just use a power source to charge that so that they're able to watch that. Now that obviously needs uh, constant power to power um, the DVD player. It's a little different than a tablet that you could charge and then ideally just watch until it went dead. Um, so just some things to think about as far as entertainment so that you guys literally don't go crazy um, when the lights go out, okay? So I know I didn't cover everything. There's We could talk about this all day long, um, but this is to give you an idea to get ready and prepare for blackouts, whether that's some sort of rolling blackout situation where we're having to conserve and whatever. Um, these are some things and some areas that I think about that I think are important to think about and have on hand to, to hopefully make life not be um, as miserable as it could be if you don't prepare with for having no power, okay? So I wish you guys the best. I will see you guys on the next video and I'm still looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments below. So let me know what you're thinking. Take care. Bye.